Okay, we are here in the nursery and that's why we're in black and white because we are still working on it and big reveal coming next week. But today we are joined with, joined with, joined by, He's got to get out of here. Grampy. He peed, he peed in here last time. So? He, so the rock's up. Uh, all right, all right. He wants to be part of it. He's just a baby. Behave. He's good. Oh, all right. Re reintroduce me because that was a really bad introduction. This is Grampy. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, I like dogs. Icky, you're being like, bad, buddy. Like, you're like, being bad. I like dogs and children, so we, we'll, we'll be all right. Come here, Nikki. Stop being bad. Oh, damn it. Give me that. That's not for you. That's not for you. That's for your grandpa. Come here. Put a bed right over here. Get in your little bed. Get in your little bed. There you go. No, don't wrap back around and get the thing See, I just no, took from he's, he's a deceitful he's animal. He's bad. Right, he yeah, get over here. He might go to sleep. Okay. Here. By the way. Can I frame this too? No, I don't want that framed. Well, it should be professionally cleaned. I like it as is. Okay. Okay. Anyway, hold on the power tool for one second. With Father's Day fast approaching and you are getting older, let's be honest. You mean I've lost a step? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> No, I'm just saying. Is that what we're making public now? I've lost a step? No, you look great. Yeah. I've noticed you hit every step. This is something I saw on TikTok. Well, actually, I saw it on Instagram Reels after it went viral on TikTok. But it's seven questions. Go ahead. <laughs> it's seven questions to ask your dad before it's too late. But when I wrote down the questions, there's... Really eight, sorry, I just threw up in my mouth. Did you hear it? That's great. Seven questions to ask your dad before it's too late. Before we ask the questions, let's put a vomit as a, as a visual in their heads. Okay. That's great, All thank right. you. Okay, you can keep working while I ask you the questions and I'll come film you. Excellent. The first question is, what is your happiest memory of us? Happiest memory of us? I guess my happiest memory, but it wasn't, it was kind of us, of us but we, we weren't necessarily together in the moment, is um, the first goal you kicked in soccer. You were, t you were teeny tiny, it was the first first time you played. See, this is what this dog does. I'll kick him out, I'll kick him out. <laughs> Come here. Okay, I'm back. The first goal I ever scored. Oh, so anyway, there, there I am. We're all kind of kind of new to it, especially you. But you were you were on the team, and the you know there's an expression. Uh, f f everybody on the team sort of swarms around the ball like a uh, you know a seven year old girl soccer team. Uh, but this was a pretty good team. They were keeping their distance. They were understanding their roles and things like that. Anyway, Lizzie is a, is a, is on the front line. She's she's making it down. Uh, the court and you know her confidence I guess propelled her because she had no experience and she, you know she winds up and she kicks and she it goes in and there is a delayed response uh, she doesn't know exactly what has just happened and then she slowly begins to realize this is the point of the whole exercise and then she starts to get a little swagger and she turns around and runs and so it was just that that moment that little vignette which uh, which uh, comes to mind when you ask me happiest time. Okay. I love that. That's All very right. sweet. Question number two. Yeah. What is one story I don't know about you? Uh, one story you d I don't know about me that I now want everybody to know about? No, that I don't know about you. But by the way, you know, move me and frame is fine, but are, how much are you revealing of the, of the room? Which can, It's going to be in black and white. People can only see from your tits up. Well, it's good that I've got a well-developed pair of breasts. <laughs> um, let's see, the, uh, the, the question was again, the story about me that you don't know about. Have I talked that much about Utah when we'd go to Utah during the summers when I was a kid? Uh, pretty, uh, pretty young. If you're gonna talk about when Muv broke a broom over your butt, I literally found the broom at the cabin, broken in half in the yard. Okay, well. 
that has not been confirmed by a local archaeologist. So one of the most delightful uh, trips I ever took is up with uh, Uncle Bob uh, in Utah. We went up to uh, the mountains right outside of Cedar City and um, tons of red rock around uh, that area. And we went with uh, a sort of the extended white family. So lots of, lots of people. And um, we took about, there must have been about uh, seven to 10 horses, uh, each of us sort of getting on this camping trip and we were gonna go camping on horses. And it was uh, sort of out, definitely out there in the sticks, although um, one uh, hardy uh, pickup truck was able to, uh, to supply us as well. But we uh, fished for rainbow trout in the creeks up uh, near uh, uh, Navajo Lake, uh, up near Cedar Breaks, I think, up, near, up around there. Anyway, it's a story you don't know too much about me, but uh, that time in uh, Utah, very formative. Lots of horses. I used to love going and seeing uh, Uncle Bob and Aunt Arlene, right? Uncle Bob, Uncle Bob and Aunt Arlene, and you had a... And C Cliff Williams married Aunt Arlene. Aunt Arlene was your, your grandmother's youngest uh, sister. And so she was sort of the baby of the family. And um, uh, so she lived in Cedar City. And uh, her, her husband's name was Clifford, and you used to call him Cliffy. Cute. Every year, well, for a few years in a row, my dad would put my five to seven year old butt in a car and we'd go on a road trip from Northern California to Utah and stay in his maternal family's cabin in the woods where there was no electricity and nothing. And one of my most formative memories is stubbing my foot on the wood floor in the cabin and getting a huge splinter. Do you remember that, Dad? Hell yes, I remember it because I had to, uh, one, hold you down and two, yank it out of you and three do it in a way that didn't terrorize the rest of the family who had to listen i to this day can see oh, yes i remember oh yes can see the snot and tears coming out of my own face while he pulled it out it was a splinter that was like almost as big as like a quarter of a matchbook it was big okay it was grande. third question what was it like when you first found out you were going to be a father? When I found out, I, for some reason, I always had anticipated my being a father. Um, and I think it's because I had such a great time with uh, my father, I anticipated uh, fatherhood as being one of the great experiences in life, and that was something that I was going to do. So from a very young age, I anticipated um, uh, being a father. Uh, so uh, at the appropriate stage of life, I decided to marry. And um, I met a woman who uh, already had uh, a kid, and uh, so it was, in a sense, we were a really kind of instant uh, family. But we were uh, young enough and hardy enough to have uh, expand the family, uh, and so we were uh, trying to get uh, pregnant. Um, but pregnancies are not easy. Uh, fertility is a, is a tough thing for a lot of women and a big part of public health that we should all be aware of. Uh, but um, uh, so we uh, miscarried before Elizabeth uh, came along and uh, Jessica Pete was the name of that uh, baby. We did end up uh, naming, naming that kid uh, Jessica Pete. But it, it, uh, we miscarried fairly early in the term. And so after that, the next time we got pregnant, we, we were you know excited and anticipating wonderful things, but it was somewhat muted uh, because of the prior experience. So we were being, we were being more cautious than uh, excited. So uh, that's the answer to question number three, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm pregnant, so I'm crying, but I'm excited to be a mom because I had so much fun with you as my dad. So I love hearing that. What do you enjoy most about being a father? This slave labor. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, for the, the, the rare uh, middle-aged white American male uh, who's uh, really good at expressing all of their feelings instead of stuffing them and compartmentalizing them, uh, doing this kind of work allows you to participate as a uh, grandparent or as a father uh, without having to uh, 
Uh, but it gives you something to do with your hands and something to talk about. Uh, so the emotions are so big around this stuff that having uh, something like a, you know, a painting project or a shelf project uh, allows you to participate. And I was thinking yesterday I got the privilege, the high privilege of assembling the crib of uh, my expectant uh, grandson, Elizabeth and Joe's uh, uh, son. And what an incredible privilege and delight uh, that is. Um, so, uh, otherwise, you know, uh, Elizabeth and Joe shoved me in a small room in their house, shut the door, and uh, periodically would open it, throw some food in, and then slam shut again. <laughs> so I've been here for three days, but... Um, huffing fumes. Yeah, huffing fumes. The question was, what do you enjoy most about being a father, by the way? Not tell your audience you've been held hostage. <laughs> the uh, the build the the building stuff the coaching I coached Elizabeth that was a lot of fun the doing stuff going to museums uh, reading together uh, you know playing video games together uh, that sort of thing I was a single dad for a while of a of a wild female child so we had to go out and do father daughter things. And, just, just, just the getting, the getting out and the doing of the stuff. This man used to take me to get manicures and pedicures, and he too would get manicures and pedicures. And to this day, my friends remember, I just cried because I'm so grateful. He used to sit in the car and sleep while we would go to midnight movies so that you would be there to pick us up at the right time instead of forgetting to come at all. My friend Katie still remembers you sleeping in the car at the Rio Del Mar when we would go see like The Big Lebowski or Donnie Darko at midnight. So. That's some of my favorite stuff was the you getting out and doing things with me. Sneaking out for breakfast in the morning is my favorite. The sneaking out for breakfast, uh, really one of my favorites too. Sleeping in the parking lot, uh, not, one, <laughs> not one of my favorites. <laughs> I also remember when you would go to work in the Bay Area, mom would take me to the bus stop you would get off at and I would hide and jump out at you and we oh, called him Daddy yeah. Pop. That was, called, that was called Daddy Pop. One of the nicer things that your mother uh, did was the Daddy Pop. So uh, I would commute in uh, from San Francisco into uh, up into Terra Linda, California, if you know where that is. And uh, on a bus was one of my uh, commute routes. And, uh, and as the bus approached the stop, I would look around because the kids and uh, Robin would be hiding somewhere. And then when I got off the, the bus, uh, they would daddy pop. Uh, if th those of you are familiar with the Pink Panther movies, uh, when Inspe Inspector Clouseau comes home uh, and Cato is hiding somewhere uh, because they're going to simulate a, a, a fight, and so he sneaks into the house, Cato, Cato, where are you? <laughs> and anyway, my dad and I would uh, make those, would always make. Uh, Pink Panther jokes, Peter, Peter Sellers jokes. I did not know that was Pink Panther related. Yep. Did you do good? Oh, really good. This man has single-handedly assembled this entire room. Okay, keep going. Okay. This one seems stupid, so I might skip it, but I'll ask it just in case. Okay. What's the nicest thing I have ever done for you? The nicest thing Elizabeth has ever done um, uh, for me. I can't, I, uh, there's been so many. <laughs> You're such a bitch. So many nice things to, that you've done. It's hard to select, you know, the, among the the three that you've done over the years. <laughs> the nicest thing that you've done for me? Uh-huh. Having a grandchild. Can I can I tell you what I think are some of the nice things I've done? Can we just linger on my answer for a few minutes? Yeah. Alright, we, we you've ruined it. You've, ruined, you've spoiled the moment. <laughs> Do you remember your birthday when I made you all the cupcakes with your favorite things painted on them? Oh yes and a really great batch of cupcakes too and an in early indication of Elizabeth's arts and craft skills. Damn, you were out of focus for all of that. Hold on, I'm gonna cut and come back. Okay, and then another time I was nice to you, remember when you moved away from Scotts Valley? 
and you loved Bruno's and we would go to Bruno's for your birthday mm -hmm. because they, that one woman sang crazy happy birthday. Mm -hmm. I had her call you and sing happy birthday. Oh, that was pretty nice too. That was, <laughs> that was good. Bar barbecues, oh, you put barbecue sauce on it no matter what it is. Chicken, beef, pork, birthday experiences, uh, um, you know, there's a whole adult category of things that get better with barbecue sauce too. That's not appropriate to talk about. We're serving barbecue at the baby shower. Excellent. That's just two things I can think of that are nice. I'll take care of you when you're dying too. Uh, when I'm dying? Yeah, I got you. Are you going to be my death doula? Are you going to be my death doula? I don't doula death. But you can die in my house for sure, and I'll love you through it. Um, 86. I'll be 86 years old, so it's 20 years. Uh, Why are you declaring 86? Let's manifest more, bro. Over here. Put the, put the subject in the frame. Have, have I taught you nothing? You're in the frame. Okay. <laughs> you, I want more than 86 years. How many do you want? Uh, as many as I can get. I'm not sure I got that many. I think you do. Okay. Okay. What do you want or wish most for your kids? For my uh, my kids and my grandkids, kid. Sure. To be happy. Okay. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's that's it. And I'll be watching. So. <laughs> okay. It's a good want. I didn't mean to minimize it. Are, are you rat? Are you rat focusing each time? Or? No, I zoom in and zoom out because I can't stand up anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm hunched over the dresser. I'm doing the best I can, but my ribs hurt very bad. Um, okay, what have been the best and worst parts about getting older? The best parts about getting older is. I think I'm using this term correctly, but the, but time kind of collapses. Your memories are put in, your, begin to shift perspective a, a lot and over a short period uh, of time. Um, and so that's one of the that's one of the best things about getting old is that you you've got a sense of history and your sense and you, your sense of history and your sense of self uh, sort of begin uh, to merge. And so that's, uh, that's kind of the fun thing about getting old. I guess, you, you know, a little wisdom comes along with that, although uh, in my case. Uh, the worst thing about getting old is um, uh, not being able to run or move without a good 35 minute warm up. Okay. I will also say I have noticed that you are very wise with your age and there's an ease that comes with your time spent on this earth learning who I'm sorry what this is a, a peace pipe oh Native American. so it's a it's appropriation <laughs> great okay and then this is the last one last one yeah and then I'm gonna leave you to do the shelves and stretch my ribs what's one thing you want me to always remember after you're gone Do you want to wait and I'll, you want to think about it and I'll come back? Yeah. Okay. We'll be back. Do you know how we do transitions on this channel? No. Let's see what a fan you are. Put this in your mouth. <laughs> All right. You've had time to consider it. What's your answer? Uh, uh, two things. What I want you to remember after I'm gone, the first thing is for the first two or three months after I'm gone, remember that I've had an incredibly blessed and wonderful life. I can't believe how it turned out. And um, so even if I were to die tomorrow for having ingested a video camera, for example, uh, I would be super happy. And the second thing, speaking of happy, that I'd want you to remember forever is that um, you're never quite happy but happiness is the most important thing. Um, 
Happiness isn't, isn't uh, fun always. Happiness isn't uh, being exhilarated, uh, but uh, being happy is the most important thing. So that should be your foundational value. Am I happy? That's it. That's all for now. All right, well, they should put a warning on TikTok that this is a exercise you should not do while pregnant and emotional because you will cry. And what else will you do, Dad? Uh, What's my sign off? Your sign off? Um, wow, he's a fake fan. And that's the sip. No! Oh, and that's the Lizzie Gordon. See you next Tuesday. See you next, see you next Tuesday. <laughs>